There is two global level theorems uh, in asset pricing and uh, derivatives pricing, and they are called um, fundamental theorems of asset pricing. And let's see what they say. So here is a, a kind of a preview, the general picture of what's going to happen. Uh, well, please ignore this one here. Uh, so in terms of ma models of financial markets, the you can think of models in terms of those that have no arbitrage and models that have arbitrage. Now for these, we have nothing to say. There is not really much uh, theory. You just take, take advantage of arbitrage if there is arbitrage. Uh, it turns out that those are exactly the models in which we don't have those martingale probabilities or risk neutral, they're called also risk neutral measures because probabilities are also called probability measures. Uh, in uh, mathematical terminology. Uh, so it turns out, uh, and this is going to be our first theorem, that having no arbitrage in your model is exactly equivalent to having at least one risk neutral measure, at least one pricing risk neutral or martingale probability. So really, uh, you know, uh, martingale probabilities are in fact the same as having no arbitrage. They, they are essential for studying uh, markets. Uh, and um, then we can split those models which have no arbitrage, and this is going to be our second theorem, into um, complete markets and incomplete markets. So I will define more precisely what those are, but just quickly, complete markets are those in which you can replicate any random payoff. So there we, it turns out that no arbitrage and completeness means there is exactly one risk neutral probability, exactly one risk neutral measure, uh, and therefore there's going to be exactly one price for every possible derivative, every possible option, every possible asset. Okay? And it's going to be equal to the cost of replication. In complete markets, everything you can, you can replicate everything, and therefore you know the, the cost of replication for everything, therefore you know the price for everything. In incomplete markets, there's going to be many uh, risk neutral measures and many possible no arbitrage, uh, and in fact, many possible no arbitrage prices. There's going to be a range, an interval of no arbitrage prices, which you can think of as a bid, ask, bid uh, price and an ask price, and everything in between ca can be a no arbitrage price. Okay? So it's a, it's a less clear situation, although in practice, uh, as I will mention later, uh, people kind of deal in incomplete markets in practical sense. They deal uh, with pricing pretty much in the same way as they do in complete markets. And then how to compute that price, and this is really also true in incomplete markets, uh, we will have uh, uh, the expected value approach, uh, as we already discussed, expected value under the risk neutral probability of the discounted payoff and in uh, our black scholes merton model, continuous time, uh, Brown and motion model, we will be computing that price actually as a solution to a PD, a partial differential equation. Okay. There's a lot of information in this, in this graph, but um, this is just kind of a preview, we'll do, we'll do this in detail just to give you a global sense of where we are heading. Okay, so we already found uh, uh, in our binomial single period model how probabilities look like those that make discounted stock a martingale. We have these formulas for our Q and one minus Q for the up move and down move. Uh, to make the discounted stock of martingale. Okay. Uh, th there is another piece of terminology here that I want to introduce, EMMs, or equivalent martingale measures. Those are going to be martingale probabilities, which are also equivalent. Well, what, it, what does it mean, equivalent? In terms of this example here, equivalent means this is exact, strictly between 0 and 1. Both of these probabilities are strictly between 0 and 1. Uh, so, which is the same as the original p and 1 minus p probabilities, they were strictly between 0 and 1. There was some randomness in the stock, in other words. 
so we want Q, the risk neutral probability, is also to have to be strictly between 0 and 1, so that there is also randomness in the risk neutral world for the stock. That's equivalent to this condition that D is strictly less than 1 plus R, strictly less than U, that I already made a comment before that, it's a, that it is a no arbitrage condition. Okay? Uh, so, <coughs> so we can kind of see this first theorem already here, uh, that, that having these Martingale probabilities is the same uh, as, as, this, uh, as no arbitrage, because this is really a no arbitrage condition, and under this condition these will be probabilities, these will be between 0 and 1, and in fact strictly between 0 and 1. Uh, so this strictly between, uh, we say that these are equivalent probability measures, uh, w formal definition is P and Q are, are the equivalent probability systems or measures if the events of non-zero P probability also have non-zero Q probability and other way around and vice versa. Okay. Or if you want uh, events of zero probability, P probability are also events of zero Q probability and the other way around. So these probabilities give the same the same zero, prob prob zero probability to the same events. Okay? So then they're called equivalents. Uh, so this one is an equivalent probability measure uh, in, uh, in, um <coughs> in the binomial single period model, and it's also equivalent under this condition. Okay? In fact, it's also a unique, uh, a unique probability uh, uh, unique equivalent Martingale measure. Okay, so uh, let me just a piece of a notation which is sometimes confused, explanation of the notation which is sometimes confusing uh, when you first time see this. So I'm using lowercase q, while minus q, then I'm using uppercase q. So uppercase q is just kind of a notation for the whole overall global probability over all possible uh, events and outcomes. So in, in, in the binomial model, uppercase Q would simply be the pair Q and 1 minus Q. Okay. But if, uh, if I have more than two possibilities, then there will be Q1, Q2, Q3, and so on. So uppercase Q is just a notation for the whole, uh, for all the probabilities involved. Uh, and uh, in particular, in, in continuous time, it's going to be continuously many. So, so I need a letter. I need a notation for that. And in particular, it's convenient uh, if I write expectation under this system, under small q's, I will write it by using capital Q here. That's just a notation that uh, denoting that I'm computing expected value under some system of Q probabilities. Yeah. So that's just, just for notation purposes. <coughs> All right, so, so, so that was the definition of equivalence.